Hey YouTube, how you doing? Um, I've decided to do my first vlog just so I can get my name out there and so I can so people can actually so I can get my how I am and how exactly I am up so people can actually know me. I know I say about what I am and what I do through words, but it's better, I think it's better to hear, for people to actually hear my voice rather than actually just reading text. Well, let's start. Well, my name's Tom. I'm 25 years old, and and I am a mechanic. I have been a mechanic for about 10 years. For about, yeah, this year will be my 10th year of being a mechanic. I do work with my dad. I know, which is a bit, mm, at times, but sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Um, I'm currently looking for it. I say I'm currently looking for a new job. I have applied, but. Yeah, it's rarely slow for him to reply to me, rarely on for the job application, but oh well, I can still log. Um, what else about me? Um, well, I am, well, I'm a gamer, I'm a brony, I'm a furry. I know there's a lot of people out there that disres don't like or show hate to the brony and furry fandoms but if you actually get to know a furry or a brony and take their side to and listen to their side and what they think instead of just jumping on the bandwagon of oh he's a furry oh he's a furry he does this oh they're a, oh they're a brony they must do that some say there's two sides to a coin really on the fandom pretty much there's some that may do the darker side of the stuff and there's some people that do the lighter side of the stuff and like going to meetups meeting friends meeting people doing charity work and like going into hospitals and seeing sick kids in hospitals and stuff like that it's not exactly that people it's just that it's the side that people have actually been listening to, to the on the internet more of like the hate and the darkness of what people have actually been read, have read online and been told and everything. I mean, it's like with I'm putting it out there with Furcast last. I think it was either last year or beginning of this year they did a gaming event for charity which is good there's one of the hosts on it and some of his friends Pharaoh the blue fox he went to hospitals and saw sick kids in hospital so it would help so to make it so he did go to hospital to see the kid see kids in that so they could see like the gentler side of the furry fandom and that. I know there's the dark side like mer suiting and stuff like that, but it's really that's just a one tiny portion of the furry fandom. It's like with the brony fandom, some people are saying, oh the brony fandom is like this. The brony fandom Oh it's Oh look, it's a grown man that likes to show for a little girl. Oh, he must fantasise about it or he must touch animals or stuff like that. Actually, no they don't. There's a lot of bronies out there that actually do not do that. There's a lot of bronies out there that actually, like the furry fandom, do a lot of charity work and stuff like that. They... It's like... Yes, they go 
yes they like a good show for a little for little kids and that but if you actually look at the show now and how it has been for the past six seasons the uh, past six seasons there is actually they've actually made it of broader variety for the pe for people so yeah it's a show for little kids but they've actually broadened it so it's not exactly it is for little kids it is for grown-ups and it's just how it's turned out it's not bad it's not wrong it's just people getting the nostalgia feeling of how the actual show was back in the 80s and everything I know they've brought it up to modern times but the, the feeling and the nostalgia of the actual show is still there um, Like I said in the beginning, about, um, well, that's the rant over between the furry and the brony fandom is what people have against that. Well, I said I was a gay man. I am. I have an Xbox. I have a laptop. I have a DS and I have a PSP. I do go on my Xbox mostly. I do play card. I do play Fallout. I do play The Division, even though there's a lot of hate and about the division people saying it to a walking simulator which it is a little bit in its own right because it's not like a pvp where it's everybody's like a full open map where people are roaming the streets and trying to pick you off as you're walking down the streets no you have to do that in the dark zone for some reason they don't actually if they if they actually did want to do it as a proper mmo they would actually make it so the entire world is a PvP area, not just the one area of the Dark Zone, not all the Dark Zone. They would put it in everywhere. Yeah, there's enemies you have to go against, like the rioters and the cleaners, but that's just so you can get XP and do missions and side missions and stuff like that. But there's no actual, there's no proper PvP until you get into the dark zones. And even then, the dark zones are a bit lacking, in my opinion. It needs to have a little bit more into it. A bit, the game, act, yes, I know there, there's a season pass for it, and I know they're on about including more maps and more missions and everything. But. The game is lacking, in my opinion, in something. It's like with, um, putting it out there with, like with Metal Gear and stuff like that, how they cut content from Metal Gear to go, we're going to do this, we're going to, this is going to be Metal Gear Solid 5, it's going to be good, it's going to be great. It is a good game. It's, the graphics are, are really good. The, gameplay and the actual engine that the game runs on is quite good even though it's a bit buggy at times but I mean the actual the actual game itself with the cut content like chapter 3 and chapter 54 there was actually, I think, in my own opinion, that that would have added a bit more to the game. I know they released um, Grand Zeroes as like a beta, oh, this is a run up to the story. But I mean, why would you release that? And if you skip all the cutscenes, people have paid 25, 30 quid for eight minutes of gameplay of the main story if you cut all the cutscenes which is a bit mm, I know they put extra side missions into the actual game but that is a bit a bit of a money grab in my opinion I know they said the sales I know people said the sales of the Phantom of um, Grand Zeros helped fund the rest of the Phantom Pain but the, it I know I can't say say my opinions in case I get slammed for it or anything, but if Konami didn't just go, 
all Hideo Kojima, you are too bankable for our liking, you've made us too much money, now go. You wouldn't. People was loyal to the fan base of Metal Gear, and you wouldn't just drop the entire game, the entire creation and the creator of the game, just for an internal upset or something like that. It's like with Silent Hills. You wouldn't, if you was going, you let them release a playable teaser, which is good, it was a good teaser. I mean, I played it on my friend's console. But you wouldn't just release the trailer and then dump hit and then dump Ko Kojima and then go, nah, we're not doing it anymore. You wouldn't actually do that if you know the fan base for Silent Hill was actually really deep, which it is. Because it has got a really good fan fan base, like with Resident Evil and stuff like that. But it's a bit eh, really. That I know I'm going to get a bit slammed, but it's just an opinion of my own. But mm, a bit of a rant is over. I'll tell you, um, the type of games that I like to play are shooters, RTS, first person shooters, horror, racing, um, JRPGs, MMOs. I mean, I do have Steam, and my laptop is fine. My laptop does play certain games, but it does bug out. Bug out really really bad and makes them lag stupidly hard like playing CSGO or anything like that it would make you just go mm, and just cut out and lag and everything I know my laptop is six years old but if it can play SimCity fine and it can play Sims 4 fine and it can play TF2 fine it should be able to play CSGO fine because I mean the actual games, I know the games are very fun and Valve is a very good game maker and I do enjoy their games, but they need to, in my, I think that they should make the games be able to run better on older generations of, con of PCs and laptops, not just keep it all you need to have such and such processor with such and such graphics and this and that memory there's if people could play counter-strike on older pcs of their older ones like the original counter-strike and counter-strike source and counter-strike deleted the deleted missions and stuff like that off counter-strike it would make it better in my opinion I know like with TF2 they made it a free to play which was good so it was good for new players to come and play TF2 I know it was a frustration for the older players the players that have had more experience of playing the game and stuff like that but it's really my I just think that it's a bit iffy in fact the older generation of TF2 players and stuff like that would go against the newer ones and go oh they're free to play they have no right in playing this game and stuff like that everybody has a right to play the game it's just that you, they have a different learning curve to what you have when you're playing the game I mean some people I know people are good enough to go in tournaments and stuff like that but if you have a tournament for the like the newer players and players that can actually are actually learning so I think it would, it would be good to have like workshops of how you do how to like different how to mission I know TF2 has got a tutorial mission but that doesn't teach you everything you need to know it teaches you some of the aspects of the game that you need to know but it doesn't teach you actually all of the game like all of the different maneuvers you can do like on 
Elite Dangerous. Elite Dangerous has got lots of training missions so you can learn how to properly control your ship and how to fire and how to fly and how to dock and everything. It'll give you a full rundown of what you need to do and lets you play through it. It's giving you actual tutorials which is good. But it's not bad. It's it's not bad, but I think certain game aspects and certain games could improve a hell of a lot. Um, what else should I talk about, or rant about, or give an opinion, or tell you about? Uh, my type of music that I like. I like anything pretty much. I do like odd aspects of rap. I'm not a big fan of country music, but I'll listen to odd ones. Like I know Johnny Cash isn't is a bit country, but not full country. But I do like Johnny Cash. I like Meatloaf. I like Queen in the rock eras and stuff like that. I like drum and bass, like Galantis and Knife Party and Knife Party, Galantis. Um, Flux Pavilion, Bassline and Drum. I like lots of drum and bass, I like techno, I like rave, I like game music, I like Undertale. Undertale is fun, the soundtrack is amazing. It does hit you in the feels when you're playing that game. Um, sun, um, let's see. I am an anime fan as well, I forgot to add in earlier. I forgot to add that in earlier, but I'm an anime fan, I am into cosplay and stuff like that. Like people go, oh cosplay, or they'll dress up as a woman, or they'll do that, like that. No, that's crossplay. Cosplay is costume play, completely different, and it is very fun. You get to meet lots of new interesting people, you get to make friends, you get to go to meets. If your costumes are really good, you can go to actual tournaments to represent like Europe and the UK. Sometimes you can get famous for doing it and be, a, be cosplay models and stuff like that. There's um, there's actual well, what should, what, how to put that? There's actual real money aspects for tournaments like cosplay tournaments, gaming tournaments music tournaments and stuff like that. I mean, music tournament, not music tournaments, cosplay tournaments are really, really good. Gaming tournaments are really, really good. Music, I know they have like contests and stuff like that, which is actually, which is fine. And I do watch quite a lot. I've been recently watching CSGO tournaments and stuff, Go Luminosity, but CSGO tournaments, I know there's hype and I know they have them in arenas like Call of Duty tournaments and stuff like that, go up to gaming, but it's the amount of money, I know they do put a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of training into doing this, into doing what they love, it's the money though you get for doing the tournament, I mean for what I do as a job, as a mechanic, I wouldn't even earn half of what they what they earn for gaming tournaments at all. Not in the least, but I'm interested in tournaments and stuff like that. I'm interested in cards against humanity, I'm interested in what it? I'm interested in Magic the Gathering and stuff like that. I'm interested in D&D but I've never done it, I want to, but it just depends. But I think I'm going to end this vlog, this vlog, I'm going to end this vlog right here and I will try and post another one soon, maybe tomorrow, maybe Thursday. It may be another rant video or it may not, depends how I feel. If you can like and subscribe like subscribe or comment or comment some feedback as how I can improve 
or if you want to just don't vlog ever again, it's completely up to you, how you put it in the comments. I mean, I'm, I'll be all right. I'm all right with, I'm all right with creative criticism and stuff like that. And it, as long as it helps me improve what I'm doing, I am fine with it. So, it depends on how you want to, how, what you want to name, call me in the comments, call me Tom, call me Arcana, call me Ark. It's up, completely up to you. So, I'm going to end this here. So, Arcana out.